Mrs. Deputy Administrator, thank you for this very important opportunity for the RFERL. Uh, US and Georgia are celebrating the 30th anniversary of establishing diplomatic relations at a time full of existential challenges for Ukraine, first of all, for the whole world, and for Georgia too, of course. How has the war in Ukraine changed the USAID priorities uh, so far to tackle very specific and immediate, immediate problems of uh, refugees, for instance? Well, thank you. Um, thank you for, for uh, sitting down with me today. And let me start by saying how honored I am to be in Georgia to mark and celebrate the 30th anniversary of diplomatic relations between the United States and Georgia. It is uh, really a special uh, moment uh, in our uh, partnership. Um, your question about how, it has, how the invasion of Ukraine has changed things. Russia's further invasion of Ukraine and the um, inhumane uh, pummeling of that country, the toll that it is taking on cities and civilians across all of Ukraine, um, the horrific violence that it is perpetrating, it's changing the whole world. It's, uh, it's, it's causing mm -hmm. the whole world to look at things uh, differently. We're seeing an unprecedented reaction from Europe um, the Trans-Atlantic uh, Partnership is stronger than ever. Um, you, you're seeing it in terms of the unprecedented sanctions that we've been able to um, collectively uh, put on Russia. Um, you're seeing it in countries um, now uh, quickly just joining NATO, Sweden, fast-tracking uh, in a matter of weeks. Um, countries joining the EU, including um, Georgia's uh, bid. Uh, moved up by several years uh, to join the EU. So you're seeing changes across uh, the whole geopolitical spectrum around the world. And of course, uh, with our partnership, USAID's partnership mm -hmm. with Georgia, we're also doing um, some stock taking uh, to see how Definitely. we can even better support Georgia in this time of, um, of, of uncertainty and insecurity. Um, economic insecurity and, and mm -hmm. uncertainty. Um, you know, the, all the changes that are going on, um, what we can do more to strengthen and deepen our partnership. So we're, we're looking at everything. What about uh, some changes in uh, the agenda, in the priorities of the USAID um, regarding uh, the war in Ukraine? Yeah. That was well, the question. You, you, you asked about refugees. Yes. Um, right now, we have not seen a huge number of refugees coming to Georgia from Ukraine. We've seen About 20,000 Ukrainian citizens are in Georgia as uh, Ukrainian embassy. Yes. Says. Um, and, and I understand that some of them are tourists who were stranded here and the, uh, the Georgian government has been uh, supporting them in hotels. I, I, I do recognize that. But when we look at um, mm -hmm. the millions and millions of people who have now fled Russia's um, aggression in Ukraine. Um, you, you know, Georgia has um, mm -hmm. not received the bulk of them, of course. Um, they've gone mostly to Poland and, and other countries. True. Um, but um, we are looking at ways uh, to support uh, Georgia more. Um, right now, our Congress is, um, uh, has uh, passed um, a supplemental budget of mm -hmm. more than $13 billion to support uh, Ukraine um, and also to support the countries uh, surrounding Ukraine that are um, a recipient of, of refugees and also feeling the brunt of uh, some of the economic dislocations. And so um, part of my visit here is to uh, really mm -hmm. meet with um, uh, Georgia's leaders. I had the opportunity earlier today to meet mm -hmm. uh, with the prime minister also with the Speaker of Parliament and the President of the country. And we discussed these issues of ways that uh, USAID can help uh, Georgia weather these uncertain times better. Okay, could you please share with us some issues, uh, those th that were uh, raised, uh, raised uh, at, the, at those meetings you had today? Well, um, we, we discussed um, the the challenges that mm -hmm. uh, Georgia certainly faces, um, some of the economic challenges 
um, the fact that um, Georgia's economy uh, is in some ways still quite dependent on Russia's economy yeah. um, and uh, some of the impact that that might have. Um, of course, um, our expectation that um, the international sanctions that have been imposed on Russia will be upheld here. Um, all of them uh, were very uh, firm in, in reiterating and underscoring the support for the sanctions, recognizing that that may um, incur some costs for Georgia, as it is incurring costs for um, other countries around the world. Um, so as part of this um, supplemental budgetary package, we're looking at other uh, mm -hmm. ways that we might be able to um, bring some more economic support here um, to Georgia to help further diversify Georgia's economy and to make it less dependent on Russia um, and certainly specifically to help um, Georgia in its bid uh, for EU membership um, to mm -hmm. um, uh, continue uh, some of the important work we've been doing on democracy and rule of law all of which will be critical and important for um, meeting uh, EU expectations, um, uh, helping Georgia's um, energy uh, situation be less dependent on Russia, more uh, oriented to a more diversified Western or, uh, a set of partners. Mm -hmm. um, we've also talked about uh, the need for investment in um, the private sector too. Um, coming out of the COVID pandemic, uh, there were already challenges um, what's going on in Ukraine is, is mm -hmm. further destabilizing, recognizing that, finding ways that we can help um, invest in uh, parts of the economy that will help diversify uh, tourism, mm -hmm. uh, increase opportunities for youth and small and medium um, enterprises. Uh, I am looking very much forward to a dinner tonight with women business leaders, um, providing more opportunity um, for women-owned businesses and others mm -hmm. to um, uh, look at uh, export opportunities and strengthening the economic environment here in Georgia um, for greater resiliency in these difficult times. Actually, uh, international sanctions regime against Russia will impact Georgia's economy anyway, whether Georgia will be imposing its own sanctions against Russia or not. Uh, was the position of uh, the Georgian leaders you met uh, today uh, towards uh, international sanctions regime was clear enough for you? Because that's an issue of discussion in Georgia. That's why I'm asking. I was quite direct and they were very clear that they okay. will support the international sanctions. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, For 30 years, the U.S. was supporting Georgia's path towards democracy and economic development. The USAID has done a lot uh, for that. So what do you think uh, were the main achievements and failures on that long, long road? Well, I think now is a really good moment to take stock of both where we've had successes yeah. and where there's more to do. Um, I think in, in, there, there are many areas where I see success um, uh, in um, greater energy resiliency, in some of the democracy work that we've done, in, in rule of law, and some of the progress that has been made there. Um, but there's always room uh, for more improvement um, and uh, uh, for greater efforts. Um, I think some of the work we're doing now in uh, civic education is incredibly mm -hmm. important. Um, you know, there's nothing that undermines democracy more than apathy and making, uh, helping citizens understand the important role they play in um, nurturing democracy. It's a, it's, democracy isn't something that's um, just uh, there to be had. It's something that has to be worked at and, and earned. I mean, we certainly know this in our own country, in the United States. We, we have to work to strengthen democracy and, and to, to nourish it. And I think that the um, summit for democracy that the Biden administration hosted in the fall was a very important um, moment to take stock of, of where we are in democracy. And Georgia was a, 
a good participant in that and has a, a good set of actions uh, in this year of action to strengthen some of those commitments. Mm -hmm. And they dovetail very nicely um, now with this fast tracking of EU membership because rule of law is so important for um, at being able to tell the world that this is a safe environment, a predictable environment to invest in, that, um, that your investments will be safe, that they're credible, that there's a set of rules that everyone's mm -hmm. playing by, um, that there's transparency. All of this will be very important as Georgia embarks on that uh, process of EU membership. Um, this is a moment, uh, a moment of opportunity that's coming out of this terrible crisis in Ukraine where Europe is leaning in um, to uh, work with uh, countries, uh, including Georgia, to um, fast track EU membership. Um, but it's not it's not something that will be served up on a platter. You know, Georgia has to work at sure. it, too. Georgia has to come ready to the table to be um, to be that partner that the EU is looking for. Um, and a lot of the work that USAID has put in over the years, I think, has helped get Georgia to the point where um, it's, it's more ready. I think um, pulling the, the membership application up by a couple of years um, puts even more pressure on the need to mm -hmm. move quickly on some of these areas. And um, we are taking stock of, of how we can help um, uh, st strengthen that process and, and speed up some of those processes uh, for, for Georgia. Um, uh, I found uh, one of your quotations, which sounded uh, quite interesting for me. The quotation is uh, of 2013, but uh, doesn't matter. Oh, we're going to uh, test my memory here. <laughs> no, 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 I'm going to read it. The promise of political freedom raises people's expectations for economic and social opportunities. The success of emerging democracies depends fundamentally on whether democratization can also materially improve people's lives, which actually hasn't happened yet in Georgia, and which is one of the challenges of keeping uh, populations' expectations until uh, Georgia's Euro-Atlantic integration is fulfilled successfully. Mm -hmm. So. That is one of the challenges uh, I see, despite the high support for Georgia's uh, European and NATO integration. So, um, and yeah, of course, there is a greater time pressure now on Georgia. Uh, do you, uh, what is your uh, perception after those, still I'm talking about, thinking about the, the meetings uh, with the Georgian leaders, uh, do they realize that? I hope so. Mm. Um, you know, um, I was able to spend half an hour in conversation okay. um, with each of them. So it's it's not like we covered the world, um, but they were saying the right things. Um, I was hearing them say the right things in mm -hmm. terms of, you know, the the recognition that now is a moment, a moment, frankly, of of opportunity for Georgia. Um, but I think it's I think it's also a, a moment of of risk that's felt here um, in the country, of, of course. Um, but to your question about delivering on expectations, mm -hmm. I mean, this is what's so important. It's that interplay between democracy and freedom and delivering on people's hopes and economic aspirations and doing it in a fair and transparent way. And I think that um, some of the democracy and governance work that we, USAID, have done over the years is um, to help lay a, a groundwork for um, a greater um, civic participation, a greater mm -hmm. understanding of the, the partnership that has to occur between people and government um, to, to make policies um, to make them work. And, mm -hmm. you know, unity is a message here that has been delivered um, quite frequently and the need for unity. I speak from a country that have, you know, we have our own divisive pro uh, uh, politics, but being able to come together, even in our divisive political world in Washington, our Congress can still come together and pass legislation that moves the ball forward. And I think um, that's what's needed here in Georgia, that you can still 
um, make those changes that are necessary to deliver more public goods for more people. Um, as far as we're talking about the society, its expectations, also uh, we should uh, emphasize uh, the issue of its readiness, of its level of resilience uh, against uh, Russia's disinformation, mm -hmm. against uh, you called one of the programs uh, countering malign Kremlin influence. Uh, it's one of the programs of the USAID. So um, what do you think uh, would be the most effective leverage for the Georgian society to be resilient towards those kinds of threats? Because that's, that's, a, that's an issue, real issue. Here. It's, a, it's a huge issue. It's a huge issue in Europe. It's a huge okay. issue in the United States. Yeah. And, it's a, and it's a huge issue here. I think the greatest leverage is Russia's own actions right now in Ukraine, pulling back the curtain from people's eyes to see what is um, their real agenda, which is destruction and oppression. And, um, and there's no sugarcoating it. Um, we here have um, worked on a number of programs um, mm -hmm. to help people um, understand you know, better um, how they should um, fact check things um, to make sure that they are, are able to sift through disinformation from, from real information, um, trying to build up some of that resiliency. It's not easy. Um, disinformation becomes more sophisticated mm -hmm. and it's a constant challenge, but I think that some of the work that USAID has been doing here on, on cybersecurity, on disinformation, on digital literacy to helping people understand how to navigate social media and other things um, is helpful. Um, but at the end of the day, making sure that there is robust free media um, so that people are seeing a variety of perspectives. Um, I think some of the um, actions that um, the government has taken recently to, to um, stop some of the, the worst disinformation here is, is positive, um, but you know, the, this, is, this is a challenge. It's not unique to Georgia. It's, it's um, pervasive around the world. It's becoming more sophisticated. And, um, and we just have to stay mm -hmm. very vigilant um, to continue to counter false messaging. Uh, and in the end, uh, as far as I know, you are going to meet uh, young people. Yes, yeah. I'm looking forward to that. W what would be your message? Well, that they have such an important role to play. Um, you know, they are the future of the country. We know that. Um, I really want to hear from them about their hopes and aspirations. Um, and, um, and then, you know, un can communicate with them that we, the United States, we, we want to support them in their, in their dreams. Um, you know, we, Georgia is a longstanding partner. Um, I think that there's um, a depth of our partnership, um, and I hope that they can recognize what we've tried to do, not always as successfully as we mm -hmm. want, but uh, we stand uh, with Georgia as we stand with Ukraine. Um, this is a very um, challenging and difficult moment. I think if I were a young Georgian, I'd be, I'd be scared right now, and I understand why, um, but you're not alone. And I think that's my message. I come here representing the United States, you are not alone. We, we hear you, we see you, we, we see your pain, we feel your challenges, and, and we, as we have supported you in the past, we will continue to support you going forward. But the challenge is theirs, ultimately. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you, Mrs. Deputy Administrator. Thank you.